Oh, no. 
to be happy, but we are not happy because old days will come and we will die. With, we cannot go with any pens farthing from this world. So we should remember these things. That is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there. After that, can you? Kahu Swarge, Kahu Timirandasya, Dhyanam Jala, Shalakaya, Chakshu Unmalitam Jena Tasmaya Shri Guru Venamaha, Guru Vedo Chandraya Radhikaya Tadaraya, Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tadavaktaya Namunamaha. So, you can take the book and see it. <laughs> <laughs> So the jiva is described when he commits that initial aparad of the muk to Sri Krishna. As a result of that aparad, then material desires arise in his heart, and then suffering ensues as an automatic. Um, action. So it's described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's quoting from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Bayam dvitiya vinidyesha tamsyat. This bayam, this fear, will manifest when one is absorbed in material life. It's natural because this is not our nature. How is it possible that fear? which is the antithesis of love and affection, which will manifest as a result of our living a life which is not natural. We are, as Srila Gurudev just described, nitya jivera surupoi krishnera nitya das, that we are servants of Krishna. So when we're endeavoring to be the controllers in this world, the principal motivating um, quality is fear because it's the opposite of love. So there's bayam, fear. Bayam dvitiya vinivyeshitam syat isyat uvidasya viparya yoshmiti. That this viparya yoshmiti, I am taking the position of controller rather than understanding I am being controlled. This is all of our disease in this world. When we understand that I have originally. My nature is to serve the Lord. My nature is not to be the master. In that sense, Bhakta Ramya Gita Pasham. Krishna is the only supreme controller, uh, enjoyer. And I have tried to usur uh, usurp his position for countless billions of births. As a result, I have to suffer in this world. And then, Tan Maya Tayo, Buddha. That unless I take full shelter of Sri Guru, who is the embodiment of the spiritual potency of this Sangvit Sadini Shakti, how will it ever be possible for me to understand my position? The Jiva cannot understand the spiritual conception through the material mind and senses. It's absolutely impossible. We were discussing, Madhav Maharaj was discussing the other day how uh, you may be able to get oil from sand or, um, or flowers from the sky, ghee from water, corns on a rabbit. <laughs> but for one to be happy in this material world, is utterly not possible. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur is saying in the 10th canto that one is feeling lamentation when he's feeling separation from his real identity. So this is our situation in this world. And until we um, understand our offensive nature, 
then how can we possibly realize our true identity? And we can only understand that through association with the Mahabhagava, through service to Guru. Service and association, Sadhu Sangha is the root of Bhakti. Without service, how can there be association with Sadhu? And when one is associating with Sadhu, how can there not be service? So this is the root of Bhakti. So unless this is being cultivated significantly, then how is it possible for the material mind to have that transformation of consciousness, to look to his higher welfare? So Guru, he will explain all these topics to the jiva to bring him again to his eternal position as Jivara Surupoi Krishnera Nityadas. By Sadhu and Shastra. Krishna has manifested Ved and Puran. And he has told all these things that who are you, what is the relation with Krishna. And then by the mercy of Sadhu, Shastra Kripa. And Guru Kripa, Chaitanya Guru Krishna Kripa, so we can know that who are we and then we can follow this process of Krishna Bhakti. Then, Maya Mukta Jivar Nahi, So, Daivi E. E. Shaguna Mayi, Mama Mayai Taratyaya. That when Guru and gives the spiritual potency to the disciple, then he is able to, able to overcome this um, attraction to the material energy and again understand his eternal constitutional position as servant of Radha and Krishna. <laughs> So we're discussing the Sanatana Shiksha. The teachings uh, Lord Chaitanya gave to Sanatana Goswami. And we are reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita. This verse, number 123, Shasta Guru Rupe, Apanare Janana, Krishna Mori Prabhu, Tata Jivara Hoya Jana. Translated, Krishna Das Kavraj here says, The faith, forgetful of the conditioned soul, is educated by Krishna through the Vedic literature, Shastra. The realized spiritual master, Guru, and here, Hatsan Rupi means the super soul. 
Chitta Guru with an art. Through these three, you can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead as he is. And you can understand that what Krishna is his eternal master, a deliverer from the clutches of Maya. In this way, one can acquire real knowledge of his conditioned life and can come to understand how to attain liberation. So if you want to overcome the illusion that we've been placed into, then we have to follow the instructions of Shastra and Guru. And what do Shadu, Shadu and Shastra say? We should surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Ishwara Paramakrishna. Satchitananda Vigraha. Brahma is quoting in Brahma Samhita, speaking that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Krishna. He has an eternal, transcendental body. He is the cause of all causes. He has no other cause. He is the origin of all origin. He has no other origin. And his body is unlike ours. It is Sat Chit Ananda. Our body is our Sat, our Chit, Nirananda. Full of miseries, non eternal and full of ignorance. So, surrender means body, mind, and words. Everything you place at the lotus feet of Krishna through the agency of Guru. Ultimately, bhakti means initially approaching a self-realized soul. One who knows the truth, one who has realized the truth. And by his mercy, by his instructions, one can follow the perfect path which has been clean and open it up for us to follow. So, by your initiative, you'll come here to hear from a perfect master. Uh, we are still endeavoring, even though we're wearing clothes, uh, that may say something spiritual. Actually, we are also endeavoring to please our guru. And if he is pleased, then if you please guru, you please your spiritual master, then automatically Krishna is pleased. So therefore, all our endeavors, all of our worship should be first place at the lotus feet, the self-realized perfect master. And then everything will be all right. Why will we overcome? We'll be happy, blissful, and Krishna conscious. He has given an example of Ishar Bhagya. Now for my most humble and respectful obeisance to the lotus feet of my spiritual master, divine grace, Shishuman Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, my Shiksha Guru and guardian, Sri Srila Prabhishma Vishnupad. Shishima Gorgovinda Swami Maharaj and Shishima Sri Srila Prabhishma Vishnupad, Shishima AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. To all the assembled devotees, Vaishnava and Vaishnavi, headed by Sri Nandi Sandhyan, my heartfelt obeisance to all of you. So, in this chapter of Chaitanya Charita Amrita Sanatan Shiksha, it has already been described, Sambandha Tattva. What is our relationship with Krishna? Who is Krishna? Who is the Jiva? And what is Maya? So now we're coming to Abhideya Tattva. It is not enough to understand by knowledge alone who we are and who is Krishna. We have to also understand the process. Abhideya means the process to attain our prayojan, our goal, which is Krishna training. So in this connection, there is a story which is described there was once an astrologer named Sarvagna, and he came to the house of a very poor Brahmin. And that poor man was lamenting. And he said, oh, my dear friend, why are you lamenting? What is the problem? He said, I know, because I'm an expert astrologer, 
that your father has left you a very great wealth. But this wealth, you don't know where it is. I know. And I can help you discover that. So therefore, give up your lamentations and hear from me. So he described the story that once, in, he was saying that in his house, if he was to go and dig on the south side of his house, he can dig, there may be a treasure, it is buried in the house, but if he digs on the south side of the house, he can dig very deep, very hard, and while he's searching for the treasure, so many bumblebees and wasps are coming and stinging him, and with all his endeavor, he cannot uncover the wealth in that spot. In the same way, if he digs on the western side of the house, then there are many ghosts there that will come and disturb him. And he can dig and, and endeavor very hard, very deep, but still, he will not find the treasure there. If he goes to the north side of his house, there's a big black snake that will devour him. And he can also endeavor very much there, and he will not find the treasure. Black out there. So these three directions symbolize the southern side, the wasp and bees, are symbolic of the karmakanda section of the Vedas, how a person can endeavor for fruit of activity through so many pious activities, through so much hard work in this life to attain happiness, but he'll be frustrated. He cannot attain the supreme goal of life through karma. And on the western side, those ghosts represent Jnana Kanda section, which means that the impersonalists, they endeavor very hard, they give up all types of sense gratification, except renunciation, and through the, their endeavors of their mind, without the mercy of Guru and Krishna, they cannot come to the platform of pure devotion and happiness. So they're also frustrated. So this is impersonal. And the north side... This snake is compared to material opulences and mystic yogic perfections. Yoga. yoga. First karma, then second jnana, third yoga, and other. Then he said, if you go to the east side of the house, you can dig there very simply, without too much labor, and there you will find your father's treasure. What is that wealth? And that wealth is the path of bhakti. Hmm? The wealth is Krishna frame, but the, the path is bhakti. We will serve Krishna who is very beautiful. All transcendental qualities are there in him. And he is playing in Braj with Vrajavasis and gopis. Oh, this we will see. And in the end you will have the service of Radha Krishna conjugal in the guidance of his mind. This is it. So, what is conclusion? The conclusion is that we should give up all other processes for self-realization. And, as is given in so many verses, Sarvapadi Vinir Muktam Tatparasena Nirmalam, Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhaktir, it means that Bhakti is superior, bhakti is superior. to have the service of such Krishna. And what is the proof? What is the proof of this? Bhakti is both way for serving Krishna. What are the proofs? Nasadhyat Manjo and others. Radhika Tadale Krishna Krishna Bhakta Tadabhakta Namo Namaha. So in this analogy told by Sri Mahaprabhu Sanatana Goswami, and Saravagya means the Guru. Saravagya also means Chaita Guru, the Supreme Lord within the heart. Because Mahaprabhu described to Sanatana Goswami, Maya Mogda Jeev Nahi Swata Krishna Gyan. The conditioned soul cannot get knowledge by his own efforts because he's captured by Maya. Therefore, Jeevar 
Krishna has given mercy to the jivas by compiling the Vedic Shastras through the form of Vyasadev. So what is the proof that Bhakti is the ultimate attainment? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, if you dig a little bit in the eastern side of the heart, there you'll find the wealth of Prema Bhakti. Then we want to know what is Praman, what is evidence, then where we, how we understand. Then Sajiva Goswami has described ten types of Praman. Nine he has rejected for various reasons. Like Pratyaksha Praman. Means I'm trying to understand something by the something by the activities of my own senses. But senses are limited in material, therefore cannot achieve everything. One may choose Anuman Praman, logic by inference. For example, where there's smoke, there's fire, but this is not always true. Maybe someone threw a bucket of water on the fire, there's still smoke, but there's no fire. Therefore, some above Praman, for example, I can't see something, therefore it's not there, but maybe it's under the table, or maybe I didn't see properly. Sometimes we look for our glasses, but they're on our nose. Therefore, above Praman, or I could not see it, therefore it's not there, maybe it's there, you could not see. Therefore, <coughs> Ingit Praman, oh, where's the pizza shop? Over there, maybe the guy doesn't know, but it's over there. There were all these nine types of Praman, then our Acharyas have described, in all this, there is some type of fault, some lacking. Therefore, the real Praman is Shastra Praman, or Sapta Praman. Because as the Supreme Lord is perfect, free from defect, he has complete sensual perception, there is, he is free from illusion, he never makes mistakes, he never cheats anything, anyone. Because the Supreme Lord is free from these four defects, Brahma, Pramad, Vipalipsa, Karanapata, there were his statements in the form of Veda Sastra, these also have these four mistakes are not present. Then we want to understand what is the ultimate Praman, then we have to go to the Vedic scriptures. Because that is the only way to understand what is the ultimate goal of life and the means to achieve it. There in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna has discussed three types of yoga. Also in the 11th canto of Bhagavatam, Sri Krishna describes the same thing. For the elevation of the souls, scripture has prescribed the process of karma, the process of jnana, and ultimately the process of bhakti. But in the end, karma has been refuted as being for the less intelligent. Sri Krishna says, Abrahma bhuvana lakwa puna avitara arjuna. By the process of karma, one hopes to elevate oneself to the higher heavenly planets. But even if you reach the topmost position of Brahma Lok, Puna Avitara Arjuna, one will also fall from there back to the cycle of birth and death. There after thousands of lifetimes of performing karma, then one may develop the intelligence to give it up and adopt the process of Gyan. Sri Rupa Goswami has also said in Upadesha Amrita, Kame Bhyo Paratau Hari, Priyataya Vyakto Yurupta Gyanina, Tevyo Gyan of Mukta Parama Prema Ikanishta Sata. Sijiva Goswami has given the same thing. Out of millions of ordinary karmis, then one may become elevated by the process of Gyan and reject temporary material attainment for the process of liberation. But then, after millions of lifetimes of endeavoring for liberation, then one may get the association of pure devotion, a pure devotee, and reject the path even of the ultimate attainment of liberation and achieve and endeavor for bhakti. There were in so many places Sri Krishna has described that he is only achieved by bhakti. In Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says, Bhakti maam abhijanati yava yasma svatattataha O Arjuna, I am only achieved by devotion. In 11th count of Bhagavatam, he said, Na sadyati namam yoga na sankam na dharma udavas na svadeyas na tapas tyago yatir bhakti mamujitaha O Uda, na sadyas I'm not achieved simply by reading the Vedic Shastras. I am not controlled simply by mundane mechanical process of yoga. He is not controlled by bhakti, uh, by, sorry, sankhya yoga, a metaphysical understanding of the difference between matter and spirit. He is not controlled by mundane dharma or religiosity. He is not controlled by meditation, but yatir bhakti mamo jitaha uru. I am only contri completely controlled by bhakti. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said the same thing. Dharma 
आज काल में योग नहीं कृष्ण बात कृष्ण बात है तुम्हें कहा प्रेम भक्ति रहा कृष्ण इज नेवर कंट्रोल्ड बाय धर्म आत कर्म योगा रेकी और एनीथिंग एल्स इज ओनली रॉक फूड डाइट इज ओनली कंट्रोल्ड बाय प्रेम भक्ति रहा बाय द स्पिरिट ऑफ प्योर डिवोशन बिकॉज़ therefore especially madhvacharya and the bhakti nara sutra has described bhakti eva purusha the supreme purush he is controlled only by bhakti devo puman labdi bhavato when the jiva achieves that devotion then he achieves automatically all type of happiness he also achieves the supreme lord what are the verses of it <laughs> bhakti ek raha krishna says about it i only achieve by but i am only achieved by pure devotion why because all the other processes are material and shri krishna cannot be captured by something which is material therefore bhakti as krishna is such ananda as he is free from the three modes of nature then that devotion which is directed to him is also free from the three modes of nature shri krishna describes in gita after the process after i'm liberated one will one become three from after that bahu janmanam no oh, bahu janmanam te gyanti gyanava man prapadinte vasade sabamiti samahatma sadulaba krishna describes after many many births one achieves pure devotion and come to me samasarveshu bhutasu man bhaktim labate param ah one one becomes free from all type of hankering and lamentation that means after he achieved liberation then he may achieve devotion to me may achieve means if he gets the association of pure devotion pure devotion the point being is all these other processes karma gyan yoga dharma tapasya giving of charity performing a meditation independently meditating performing acts of hatha yoga like pranam etc these are all material processes and the supreme lord he can never be captured by a material process like we're hearing this morning how madhya sort of managed to bind krishna <coughs> because sri krishna is completely transcendental he cannot be bound by a material process so as the supreme lord is transcendental his personal energy in the form of bhakti devi is also not material thing otherwise how it could bind krishna then the conclusion is our ultimate goal our prior our process of abhideya is only bhakti and nothing else and that bhakti when it's performed in a pure manner it offers the fruit of pure devotion or prema bhakti स्वरू राम निशिंग कल्पी एंड अदर्स एंड चौबीस अवतार एंड अदर्स बट कृष्ण इज सुपीरियर एंड हाउ ही इज सुपीरियर ओम अज्ञान अति निरंधस जैनांजन सलाकय चक्षुरुन मिलितम येना तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई पे माय हम लोग इसेंसेस एंड द लोटस फीट ऑफ माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर नित ओम विष्णु पाद अष्टोदल सदस्य मद भक्ति वेदांत सलो बामन वस्ताई महाराज एंड ओम विष्णु पाद परिव्रज आचार्य वर्ज अष्टोदल सदस्य मद भक्ति वेदांत सलो नारायण वस्ताई महाराज I pay my obeisances to the lotus feet of my spiritual grandsire, Nitalila Prasun Vishnu Pad, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Kesab Goswami Maharaj, and Nitalila Prasun Vishnu Pad, Sila Bhakti Nsami Maharaj. I pay my obeisances to all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis headed by Sri Dandi Sannyasis. So we have heard from Sila Guru Dev and other Vaishnavas that who am I and who I? He tormented us tortured. me and we don't know what is lead to ultimate goal 
in this sequence, the dialogue between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sanatana Goswami Pad is going on. Although Sanatana Goswami Pad is asking this question, and Srimad Mahaprabhu replied, the main fact is that, that Mahaprabhu is inspiring Sanatana Goswami to ask this question for the benefit of the whole world. Just we have heard so many discussions from different, different speakers. Look at the word of me that who is Krishna? What is the Sarupa of Krishna? It mentioned in Chaitanya Chaitamitam by Kaviraj Goswami that Ardha Gyan Tattva Prajeev Brajendra Nandan Krishna is Sarup Vichar Suna Sanatan Ardha Gyan Tattva Prajeev Brajendra Nandan Sriman Mahaprabhu now describing the Sarupa of Krishna to Sanatana Goswami Pad. Not only for him, for the whole world indicating him. Just like Lord Krishna giving so many nice advices to Arjun for the whole world. In the same way, Mahaprabhu is instructing to Sanatana Goswami for the whole world. Krishna is Sarup Bichar Suna Sanatan. O Sanatan, listen the Sarup of Krishna. Who is he? Adda Gyan Tattva Praje Brajendra Nandan. Is Adda Gyan Tattva. And he is Brajendra Nandan. So for that, Mahaprabhu has before told that Sarvatra Pramandive Puran Bachane. Whatever you speak, you have to quote it from scriptures. For this, there is proof in Srimad Bhagavatam, which is a spotless proof, spotless evidence. Vadanti Tatta Vidas Tattam Yaj Gyana Maddayam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavani Ti Sabdate. Adda again. What is Adda again? Non-dual supreme truth. All the so many substances are here in this world. Why is called Adda again? And in Adda again it mentions three features. Brahma, Paramatma, Bhagavan. But why it mentions that Brajananandan is Adda again Paratattva? Because everybody's existence depends on Krishna's existence. They have no separate or independent existence. So Krishna is non-real supreme truth. Badanti, who told this? Badanti tattva vidas tattam. Who realized the tattva? Tattva means Krishna. Who realized Krishna and his pastimes, his name, his form, his quality and pastimes? They are tattva vid. Badanti tattva vidas tattam yaj jnana maddayam. This is adda again. It has three features, Brahma, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Brahma, this is the worshipable, worshipped by Ganesh. Just like given and Paramatma, worshipped by Jogi, and Bhagavan, worshipped by devotees. The given example to make us understand this point very clear, just like if there is any mountain, from here you could not see, it seems that it's cloud. It seems, oh, this is cloud. If you go a little further, then you see it's a mountain. When you go close to the mountain, you can see there's some animals, so many trees, grasses, etc., etc. In the same way, the Brahma is the effulgence of Bhagavan. The Ganis, they could not see anything else, only the effulgence of God. So it's called Brahma. And Paramatma, and in Brahma there is no mercy at all. If there is no person, how can best bestow mercy? And Paramatma is living for the all living entities inside the heart of all living entities as a witness and worshipped by yogis. And Bhagavan, he has all qualities, all good qualities and his nice form, everything is there. So he is worshipped by devotees. So, Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavan is the Sabdate. This Adhagyan Paratattva is Sagat, Sajatiya, Vijatiya, Vedrahit. That means in Adhagyan Paratattva there is no, no difference about Sagat, Sajatiya, and Vijatiya. So, I try to explain what Sagat Sagat means Sa means own, Gat means what is inside. That means 
all incarnation of God, like Lord Ram, Nishingha, Vaman, and others, and Krishna, there is no difference theoretically. Although there is vast difference according to Ras Vichar, but according to theory, there is no difference among themselves. All are Vishnu Tattva. That means they have no Sadat Bhed, no difference among themselves. Sajatiya. Sajatiya means with his own. No, sorry, Sadat means, Sa means own, God means inside him. That means inside him means in, in his limbs there is no difference. It's called Sadat. Like Angani Jasa Sakalendriya Vritti Manti, Pasanti Panti Kalanti Chirang Jaganti. He can do any work by his any senses. We can see by eyes, we can eat by mouth, we can listen, hear by ear, but Bhagavan can eat by eyes, can work by eyes, by any sense can do any work of any other senses. Only it is possible for Bhagavan, so it's called Sagat Vedrahit. As for example, when the king Pratap, Bhattar Pratap Nudra invaded South India, and he brought from there Sakshi Gopal and Bhanda Ganesh and Ratna Singhasan, and he kept Sakshi Gopal in the temple of Jagannath Dev. After a few days, Jagannath Dev came in dream and told, O oh, king, so many days I am doing Nirja Laikadasi, like we did yesterday. So, but I said, how come? Every day we are offering so many bhogas for you. But from where are you being that Sakshi Gopal? When I come down from Singhasan before that eating everything, means he has, by eyes eating everything. So arrange separate state for him. So then king made separate state for Sakshi Gopal close to Jagannath Puri. So Sagat Vedya, Sagat Vedrahit. Sajatiya, Sajatiya means who is own, like all in, all expansion of Krishna, like Lord Ram, Nishimha, and Bhavan, etc. They have no difference among themselves. All are Vishnu Tattva. And Vijatiya Vedrahit means the, who is not his own. That means not Vishnu Tattva, like Jiva, and Jad Jagat, all there is no difference with Krishna. How come? Because their entity depends on Krishna's entity. So it mentions Vijati of Hedrahit. So by this way, he is explaining the Krishna Sadhu. Then Mahaprabhu told, Yasya Prabha Prabhato Jagat Danda Koti Katisya Sesa Vasudhati Viruti Bhinnam by whose effulgence all the Brahmanda can illuminate. And Brahma is uh, told of his toenail. And I pray the lotus feet of Govinda. Then he told Ishara Paramakrishna, Satchidananda Vigraha, Anadi Radi Govinda, Sarva Karana Karanam. Ishara Paramakrishna, as described as before, about different incarnation, there is Juga Avatar, Manantara Avatar, Sattavesa Avatar, Lila Avatar, so many Avatar incarnations are there. After that, he told, Ete Chansa Kala Pumsa, Krishna Stu Bhagavan Sayam. Indrari Bakulang Lokam Madayanti Juge Juge. Ete Chansa, which Salabasa is telling, which I have described as before. Lila Avatar, Mananata Manantara Avatar, Guna Avatar, Sattavesa Avatar, all these Chancha Angsa Kala. Some are part of Krishna, some are part of part of Krishna Kala. And Krishna Stu Bhagavan Sayam. Krishna is Supreme Personality Godhead. So it mentioned in Brahma Sangita, Isara Parama Krishna, Satchidananda Vikraha, Anadi Radi Govinda, Sarva Karana Karanam. Isara Parama Krishna, who is all our God, who is described as before, the all expansion, but who is Krishna? Parama, Isara Parama Krishna is Paramishar. The Paramishar only apply for Krishna, not for other expansion, Lord, not even 
इन परावस्था रूप लॉर्ड राम और लॉर्ड निसिंह इस तरह परमात्मा कृष्ण सच्चिदानंद विग्रह इस एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ सर चीत एंड आनंद मिन सर्चित लाज सर्चित आनंद मिन संबित संदिनी लादिनी एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ ऑल दिस इन कृष्ण सच्चिदानंद विग्रह एंड हु इज ही अनादिर आदि गोविंद एवरीथिंग हैज सम बिगिनिंग बट फॉर कृष्ण हिज अनादि हैज नो बिगिनिंग एट ऑल एंड सर्व कारण कारणम व्हिच आई हैव व्हिच यू हैव सीन एवरीथिंग डिपेंड ऑन कॉज एंड एक्शन थ्योरी व्हिच इन सीन कॉज एक्शन सम कॉज बिहाइंड दिस बट फॉर कृष्ण ही डिप बियॉन्ड कॉज एंड एक्शन थ्योरी सो सर्व कारण कारणम ही कॉज ऑफ ऑल कॉजेस एंड बियॉन्ड कॉज एंड एक्शन थ्योरी बाय दिस वे अथवा बहुत नहीं थे ना कि जना तबार जना विस्तृत में जब कृष्ण एकांत समस्तित हो जाएगा बाय दिस एक्सप्लेनिंग मोर एंड मोर वी सर लिसन फंक्शनल गुरुदेव बोलता है प्लीज हरे कृष्णा बंसा कल्पतरु बंसा सुबास सुंदर भाई बंसा सभी का नाम पावन है भोग बंसा वन सॉन्ग is coming back in just a couple of minutes everyone please stay seated for the kirtan
So in this conversation where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing to Srila Sanatam Goswami about the supremacy of the eternal transcendental form of Krishna, Krishna Swarup, his own eternal form. And from that eternal form, his original personal form called Swayam Rup, there are also many other types of expansions of his own self, like Tad Ekatma Rup, uh, Bhaibhav, Prakash, and various empowered incarnations. And these Abhesha, these incarnations are innumerable, just like the waves of the ocean which is ever coming, these unlimited waves never stop. Similarly, within this universe and within all the material universes which are unlimited in number, Sri Krishna has expanded himself in unlimited forms, transcendental forms within this universe. And within the eternal spiritual world, Krishna's original forms are there populating every single planet of the spiritual sky. So this uh, knowledge of Krishna Swarupa, uh, it manifests in the form of understanding all the different expansions and incarnations of Krishna. But the original form of Krishna, which is called Swayam Rupa, this is the Amshi. That means that all incarnations are expansions of Him and He is the original form of all incarnations. So that very form appears by his causeless, unlimited mercy within these brahmandas, these material universes. And when Krishna comes within this universe, he causes his transcendental spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan, to manifest also on the material plane within this world. And in that Goloka Vrindavan, his eternal associates, also descend here onto this planet, his father, his mother, his cowherd friends, his cows, and Jamuna River, transcendental Giriraj Govardhan, like tomorrow we will be celebrating Govardhan uh, Anakut festival under the guidance of our beloved Gurudev, who has also manifested that Vrindavan here in New Braja and that very Giriraj Govardhan just here to here. So that original place of Goloka Vrindavan Dham manifests by Krishna's unlimited potency, his internal Swarup Shakti potency manifests his eternal Dham on the material plane. And there Krishna sports for 125 years. He stays on this planet and he, he manifests his pastimes in three different ages. First of all, Balya Lila as he is manifesting as a very beautiful young boy, the son of Mother Yashoda, and he is stealing butter and yogurt, engaging in so many pastimes. Then after that, he comes into the Pauganda age. He begins to herd the calves, then the cows, and going through the forest, and playing so many leelas and pastimes, and coming into Kaishor age, where he becomes a teenager, and engages in all of his unlimited pastimes, like Ras Lila, Maha Ras, and so many others. These pastimes are going on eternally. They are never coming to an end. When Krishna manifests his pastimes here, as he did 5,000 years ago on this very planet, and he manifested in the land of Bharat Varsha, now known as India, that very Goloka Vrindavan Dham, and for 125 years he stayed in in that region. In the beginning he was in Vrindavan, engaging in his pastimes. Then at the age of 11, 11 and a half, he went to Mathura. And there he became a king. And after that he went to Dwarka, married 16,108 queens, and performed so many superhuman activities, and conquering so many kings and demons. And in this way, in 125 years, Krishna stayed on this planet, and completely flooded the whole world with transcendental praying. So, 
when Krishna wound up his pastimes here, does that mean that they were no longer here within this material universes? No. They are eternally going on in the material universes. Srila, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives an example of the movements of the sun planet. Just as when the sun planet is rising here uh, and going through its cycle of eight different time divisions, going through the day and then the night. So when we see the sun rising here uh, in another place, it is nighttime. And when it is nighttime here in another part of our planet, they are seeing the same sun, no different sun. In the same way, Sri Krishna, he travels with his eternal associates, with his divine eternal abode, Goloka Vrindavan, and when his activities are unmanifested here, they immediately again begin in another universe, where again he performs his birth pastimes, Janma Lila. And like this, he goes through all of his activities, performing them again. So constantly within the material universes, Krishna's transcendental display of his pastimes is going on. Just like the flow of the Ganges River. The Ganga is always constantly flowing, the transcendental Ganga. And in the same way, the Ganga of Krishna's transcendental pastimes are constantly flowing. So in this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enlightened Sri Sanatan Goswami with all the knowledge of Krishna's transcendental forms and his pastimes. So this knowledge of Krishna Swarupa, he concludes that if anyone hears these transcendental narrations, then definitely they will, they will become attracted to uh, serving and surrendering to Sri Krishna and they will attain Krishna Prem. So we are very fortunate that we are hearing this Sanatan Siksha, these wonderful instructions from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own lotus mouth to Sri Sanatan Goswami under the guidance of our beloved Gurudev and that we are being enlightened in Krishna Tattva, Bhakti Tattva, Prem Tattva and all these subject matters that we will hear for in the coming few days. Also, Hari Purna, Sama Purna Tara Purna. Oh yes. So, Krishna has what is called like almost like a relative existence in the sense that his existence as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, when he manifests in Dwarka, it is complete. It is called Purna. Purna it is Tama. In Braja Purna Tam. Yeah, I'm talking Dwarka Purna. 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 Yes. So when Krishna manifests in Dwarka, his leelas there, they're called Purna because they are actually complete manifestation of the Supreme Lord. But yet, it is not as much complete as it is in uh, Mathura. There it is called uh, Purnatama, Purnatara, Purnatara, which means more complete. Why more complete? Because of the manifestation of rasa. Rasa, from the uh, deliberation of rasa, it is superior there because of the moods of his associates, the Mathura Vasis and the Mathura Ramanis and so forth. And there, Krishna's pastimes uh, exhibit more completeness in terms of his display of ras and tasting of prem. But when Krishna exhibits his eternal form as Brajendra Nandan, Shyam Sundar, Yasoda Nanda, Radha Kanta, and uh, Gopi Janna Ballava, when he is in Braja, Vrindavan, he is called Purnatama, most complete. Because only there, as Srila Gurudev told. Where he is Purna and where he is Purnata. Purna is Dwarka, Purnatara no. is in Mathura. In Vaikuntha Dham he is oh. Purna. And in Puri Dwar, Mathura and Dwarka, he is Purnata. Ah. In Vaikuntha, so, yes. So, go to yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to tell how Krishna is beautiful. What are his qualities? In Braja, what doing? So, Prem Previjan. 
So, Sri Titani Mahaprabhu, he began to describe to Srila Sanatana Goswami the opulence of Sri Krishna, how powerful he is, how he has more opulence than any other incarnation. We know that when Lord Brahma, he came to Vrindavan, he tried, he wanted to see more interesting pastimes of Sri Krishna. So he stole away the boys and the calves, or he thought that he'd stolen them away. But actually, he just came under the influence of Sri Krishna's Maya. He never really stole the boys. They were still there on the bank of the Jamuna. But at the same time, Sri Krishna performed a pastime of looking, where are my friends, where are my, my friends? And he thought, what can I do? How can I return home without the boys and the calves? My mother will be upset. So he manifested all the forms of all the boys, exactly their, their shapes, their cloth, their sticks, their bugles, their flutes, everything, and all the cows, and played for one year. After, in the meantime, Lord Brahma, he went to Brahma Lok, but when he got there, he was locked out. Knocked on the door. Let me in, let me in. And the doorman came and said, get out of here. And he thought, what happened? See, Krishna had manifested a form of Lord Brahma, sat on his throne, told the servants, an imposter will come impersonating me. When he comes, throw him out. <laughs> so then Lord Brahma, he thought, oh, I've made a mistake. And he came back down to Vrindavan. And he saw all the boys are there, all the calves are there. Everything is as it is, as it was. He thought, but I thought I put the boys and calves in a cave. So he looked in the cave and they were all there sleeping. Then he thought, what's going on? Is he moving the boys and calves around? So with two heads, he looked on the bank of the Jamuna and with two heads he looked in the cave and saw that there were two sets of boys and two sets of calves. Then suddenly, all the boys who were playing with Krishna, they manifested four-handed Vishnu forms. And every single form actually had Kostuga money and the, the mark of Shivas, which means that they weren't residents of Vaikuntha, they were actually the Supreme Lord Himself, in, manifesting hundreds of times. And Lord Brahma, He saw earth, water, fire, air, ether, all the elements personified were praying. All living entities from the demigods at the top of the universe to small blades of grass were glorifying Krishna and, and doing kirtan. And when Lord Brahma looked at this, He became overwhelmed by the immense opulence of Sri Krishna. So He said, Jananta eva janantu. There are some people who say that they know about God, but as far as I'm concerned, I will remain silent. Because his form, his qualities, his pastimes, all of these things are beyond the reach and understanding of my body, mind, and words. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he told Sunan Goswami, mata anyatra nahi adbhut. There is no comparison to the astonishing opulence of Sri Krishna. And by hearing it, Chitta Mala Hoyadhut, the dirt within the heart, becomes all washed away. 
So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told a verse to Sanatana Goswami. He said, Swayam Tvasamya Disayastraya Disha Samaraja Lakshmakta Samastakama Balim Harabdis Chira Lokapala Kirita Kauriti the part of Hita. It means that the Supreme Lord is the Sri Krishna. He is the Asamurdva Tattva. No one is equal to him. No one is greater than him. All of his desires are fulfilled by his own internal potency. And all of the rulers of the universe, millions of Brahmas, millions of Shivas, millions of Indras, they come and they fall at his feet. And when their crowns, the jewels on the tips of their crowns, touch the ground at his feet, they seem to sing the hymns of the Vedas and glorify him. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uttered this verse, describing the unlimited, endless ocean of Sri Krishna's opulences. Within the ocean of that opulences, the Madhurya, the sweetness of Krishna, began to awaken within the heart of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sri Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained to Sanatana Goswami, Gopa Vesha Venukara Navakishwar Natabara. The original form of the Supreme Lord, he is in Gopa Vesh, dressed like a coward boy. Venukara, he holds a flute. Navakishore, he's eternally teenager, adolescent, and Natabara, he decorates himself like a, a dancing actor upon a stage. Mahaprabhu explained that this very sweet and human-like pastime, that is called Naravat Leela, human-like pastimes, are the highest pastimes of all the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said in this verse, Swayam Tasamyatishya Trayadisha, Trayadisha, Sri Krishna is being called the Lord of Three. So what does it mean, the Lord of Three? So first Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained, Samanya Artha, the general meaning, the Lord of Three, means that Krishna is the Lord and origin of three Purusha avatars, Gavadakashaya Vishnu, Karadakshaya Vishnu, and Kiradakshaya Vishnu. He said this is Samanya Artha, the general meaning. But then he said, there is Madhya Artha, a middle level of understanding. That is the Lord of Three means... Devi Mahesha Haridama Shuteshu Teshu and Goloka Namni Nija Damni Tale Chatasya that there is a place called Goloka Vrindavan that is the highest dam and Krishna he is the Lord of Devi Dam the material world Mahesh Dam Vaikunt uh, Vaikuntadam then Mahapu said but that is Gudharta there is a very confidential meaning to this Triadisha the Lord of Three he said that in the highest planet Galok, there are different Pakos, different dimensions. There is, in that Galok planet, the Leela of Dwarka, that is one, the Leela of Mathura, that is two, and then in the innermost region of the Galok planet, there is the Leela of Brajagokul. In Brajagokul, that is, oh, that Braj, Gokul is also known as Goloka Stita Vrindavan, there the highest pastimes take place. Therefore we say, Jaya Jaya Jwala Rasa, Sarva Rasa Sarv. Hmm? Harakiya Bhave Jaya, Brajaya Braja. In that Braja, there is Harakiya Bhav. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we began to explain to Sanatana Goswami that in Vrindavan, when Sri Krishna plays upon his flute, then the sound of his flute goes through the air. And it's just like a bird. Sometimes the bird flies through the air and makes a nest in a tree. So the sound of Sri Krishna's flute flies through the air and makes a nest in the ears of the gopis so that they become obsessed with it day and night 24 hours a day they can do nothing but remember the sound of Sri Krishna's flute it drags them forcibly from the laps of their husbands it causes the knots in their clothing to become loose and they become mad with love of Krishna and as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking all these confidential things to Sanatan Goswami he said actually I never intended to say these things to you <laughs> it was the by the mercy of Sri Krishna. Because when he began to explain the opulence of Krishna, according to the verse, Swayam Tasamyatishayatrayadisha, as he described the vast opulence, then the sweetness awakened in his heart. And Mahaprabhu, he began to drift off into relishing the beauty of Sri Krishna's flute playing and the love of Raja Gopis. So he said, I never meant to say this. But anyway, Krishna has been merciful to you and he inspired me to speak these things. And in this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed the unlimited mercy of Braja Prem upon Sri Lassana Goswami and through him upon the whole world.
now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remembered. Oh, how beautiful Krishna was. How sweet his qualities were. And then he remembered one slok of Srimad Bhagavat, Bhagavatam. Atatayad Bhaman Anhikananam Shruti Yugayate Tamapasatam Kutila Kuntaram Shimukhanjaye Jarabudi Chata Bakshakriti Krishna. Oh, Krishna is how beautiful, how lovely. When he, Krishna, in the morning going to cowherd, and when in the evening he is returning with thousand and thousand cocks and thousand and thousand gual bal sakha, or oh, he is playing on flute, and at once Gopi is coming out of their house in Nirgamna Tarunam Avala Pati Bhūmra Punya. And they began to do Arati of Krishna. Arati Krishna understands? By what thing? By their eyes, loveling eyes. Huh? And Krishna what did? Oh, by his eyes, oh, he accepted that Arati. Atati Jada Bhaman. Anhikananam Truti Yugayati. And then Gopis see how beautiful this. Why Brahma has made this? Only two eyes and weak eyes. He is not qualified. He has given only two eyes and also this. And this, oh, always coming down, coming down. So he is foolish. If I am Brahma, so if I am Brahma, then I will make no pala, nothing. And not only two eyes. <laughs> so, he is telling. Also, Benu Kwarantamarabin Dadalaya Tatsam Varaha Vatantam Asitam Budasundaram Dharmakoti Kamani Yamisesa Sobham Govindamadi Purusham Benu Kvarantam or Binda Dalai of Saksham, lotus like, lotus like, lotus petal. Oh, something. Eyes. Eyes. Reddish. And looking how? Crooked eyes, not straight. Something we want to see a special. And what is? You can imagine. Benu Kvarantam Arbind Dalaya Taksham Varaha Vatansam Varaha Vatansam Very beautiful to pick up feather. But not straight. Leaning towards left. Where? In left. Why left? Radhika. Radhika. That's more punk wants to touch the feet of Radhika. Radhika. Or Krishna wants to touch the feet of Radhika by that pick up feather. Arhava Santa Masitanga Sundarangam Kandarpa Koti Kamaniya Vises Shoham Govindamadi Purusha. So this Brajendra Dandan Sham Sundar, if he is with Gopi, then he is so beautiful. And more than that, after this is... No, no, no. Alola Chandraga Panamalya Bansi Radhanandam Kalavi 
and this is his there. He, this, this is nothing. Then where? Oh, he, see, maybe Nandagaon or any other place. So, searching everywhere, Radhika and Radhika, and he becomes mad. Then he thinks, oh, deep, deeply, very deeply we will think, I will. I see there is something in me that Radhika becomes mad to see me. Hmm? What is that? Hmm? What is that? And then, Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kirimisho Vaa and so beautiful that Radha has so high class of Pranay. Man Pranay, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, Mahabhav, Madanak Bhav. Oh, I have. She has. So how beautiful I am. And what Radhika, why he is so mad? Radhaya Pranay Mahima Kidrisho Va Nyayiva Va Shaddo. How he, how he tastes, enjoys. And after enjoying how, what kind of happiness comes, I must be Radhika, taking the mood of Radhika. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna came in the form of what? Why to realize oh, how beautiful myself? So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in. He became very, very passionate. <laughs> he had told, he had told in the end, Kama Gayatri Mantra Saru. This Kama Gayatri is Krishna himself. You should know. Gopal Mantra, Krishna Mantra is Krishna also. And it gives the process that Krishna is my most beloved. As he is beloved of all the gopis, oh my also. So you are all. Always think like this. But how to have this love and these, these things? Then Kama Gatri will have to chant. Don't neglect. And in what way he is telling? Kama Gayatri Mantra Hai Krishna Raswaru. The beauty, what? Swaru? Transcendental form is Kama Gayatri. We have 24 and a half syllables. The Krishna also. J. Akhar Chandra Hai Krishna Kari Udai Ti Jagat Kaila Dhanna Krishna Chandra Like Moon So Krishna 40 is the 24 and half angs are like Moon Oh, this is Moon They are ten, 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 twenty, and uh, he will tell. Sakhi he Krishna Mukha Dvija Raja Chandra. Dvija. Dvija means Moon. How? Ashtami Chandra, because he came in Ashtami. Oh, like this, very beautiful. Krishna Baku Singhasan. Oh, this is like from our his body. And on that, oh, Krishna, all these things are sitting. Dui Gand. So, so this is Krishna Mukh. This this is one. One. And Dui Ganda, these are two, then it becomes three. Asai Dui Purnachandrayani, 
दे आर फुट इन चंद्र ललाटे अष्टमी बिंदु दिस ललाट कवर्ड बाय हेयर दिस इज अष्टमी चंद्र एंड दिस इज चंदन बिंदु शिव एक पूर्ण चंद्रमानी क्लिंग मैंने टेलिंग ऑल्सो दिस इज वन चंद्र एंड करनख एंड हाउ मच ना व्हाट मुख चंद्र चंद्रबिंदु